Hello everybody and welcome to part two of this resume slash portfolio website tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do all of the version control for our website using Git and GitLab, and then how to deploy this to a Linode server so that anybody can view it. As a reminder, my name is Tim. I run the Tech with Tim YouTube channel and I'm a developer advocate for Linode, and I hope you enjoy part two of this series. We're going to begin by setting up the GitLab server. Once that is finished, we are going to set up the server that will be hosting our React application and we'll be pulling the code from the GitLab server because it will be hosting a remote Git repository. That is the steps in this video. If you've not already, please watch video one. There is some setup in there related to the servers as well as creating the website, which you can see in front of me. Now, of course, your website will look different. I'm sure you have your own name here and plenty of other customizations. Uh, and yeah, please feel free to modify any of this. This video will work for any React application, not just the specific one we made in the last video. So with that said, let's dive in here. The first thing we're going to do is set up our GitLab server. So I'm on my Linode dashboard here. You can see that I have two servers that I created in the previous video, my React uh, app demo, which is the one that's going to host our React application. And then we have our GitLab CA central, uh, which is our GitLab server. So I'm just going to copy the IP address of my GitLab server and paste that here in my uh, browser. And this should actually open up a page like this. Now, before we can go any further, we actually need to get the password. Uh, it's kind of a pre generated password to allow us to sign in here. And to do that, we're going to go to our React or sorry, to our GitLab CS Central or whatever yours is called and click on the launch Lish console. Now, from here, we're going to have to sign in as either the root user or the limited user that we created when we were setting up this server. So if you did not disable the root access, then you can sign in as root. But I did when I was setting this up in the uh, kind of marketplace tab for Linode. So I'm going to sign in as my limited user, which is Tim. And then I need to put my password again. Try to sign in as root. If root doesn't work, then sign in as the limited user. If you created one, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then just sign in as the root user uh, using the password that you set up or created when you made this little. OK, so now that I'm inside of here, I need to type a command that's just going to print out what the password is. And that command is the following. It's going to be cat slash etc slash and this is going to be GitLab slash and then the initial root password. Uh, now I need to type sudo before this just so that we have permission to do this. So sudo and then I need to type in the password of my limited user. If you are the root user, you shouldn't need to do that. OK, so here is the password. Now, since I'm in this Lish console here to copy this, I'm just going to right click at the tab for my Chrome here and click on copy. Uh, if you just try to right click here, you won't be able to copy. You need to right click at the top tab of your Chrome window or whatever browser it is that you're using and hit copy. OK, so now that I've done that, I can use this password to sign in. So I'm going to use uh, the username as root and then I will paste this password and just hit remember me. So use root as your username and then whatever the password is that was in your console and hit sign in. And now we can configure our GitLab server. So the first thing we can do is turn this off so that uh, only we can register for an account. So I'll just uncheck this sign up enabled and then hit save. And I'm just going to go and change my password as well. Now to change the password, we just need to change the URL up here so that it's dash slash profile slash and then password and then slash edit like that. Uh, and this should bring us to a page where we can change the password. So I'll paste in that old password and then put in one that I'm actually going to be able to remember so that I can sign it in, in the future if I ever close this tab. OK, so I think that's good. Let's hit save password. Now we can sign in and let's sign in with the new password. And there we go. We now have our GitLab server kind of initialized. Uh, next thing here to do is just create a new project. So I'm going to go new project. This is where we're actually going to store our code. And I'm going to call this React app. And I won't give it a description. This is fine for now. Make sure it's private. And then I'm going to uncheck initialize repository with readme. Make sure you uncheck that. Otherwise, there'll be a few steps you're going to have to kind of figure out on your own. So just uncheck that there. OK, so I'm going to create this project now. This is going to take a second. And there's some setup steps here on how to push stuff uh, to this repository. But for now, I'm going to add an SSH key with my local machine so that I'm actually able to push to GitLab. So I'm going to type or I'm going to hit add SSH key. And now from my local computer, I need to open up a command prompt or terminal, depending on my operating system and type the following command. This is going to be SSH 
keygen and then hyphen T. And then this is going to be ED25519, which is just a special format we need to use. And I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to override this and just do all the default options here. You don't need to do a passphrase. All right. So now what I need to do is locate this file users, Tim, SSH, ID, whatever here dot pub. I'm looking for the public key, not the private key. And I need to get the contents of that file. So I'm going to open that up in my Windows Explorer. If you're on Linux or Mac, you can probably just use a command like cat to read it out. All right. So I've opened the file location here of my public key and I'm just going to open this. Uh, I'm going to open it with let's go here. Notepad. And I'm just going to copy the contents of this file here and paste it inside. Now that I've pasted this, I can just hit add key. And now my SSH key has been added. Now, of course, you don't want to leak this key, uh, although actually I don't think it quite matters if they don't have the private key file. Either way, I probably wouldn't share that key with people. But for now, it's here. OK, so now that we have done that, we should be able to actually push our code to this repository. So let's go back to the main page here. Let's go to React app and let's start following along with some of these steps here to actually upload our code. So I'm going to close my terminal. I don't need that right now. I'm going to close this as well. I'm going to go to Visual Studio Code here. Let me just close this. Uh, we don't need to run our app anymore. And from Visual Studio Code, I am going to uh, essentially create a commit and then push that to this repository. Now, whenever you create a React application, by default, a uh, Git repository is initialized for you. So all you have to do in here is type git add dot. This is going to add all of the files to the staging area, which means we can now type git status and we can view everything that we've done to this repository from here. And by the way, I should mention we're in the website directory. So make sure you're inside the directory where your NPM package is or project is. Now, what I'm going to type after this is git commit hyphen M standing for message. And I'll just say first commit and actually commit all of these changes. So now that these changes have been committed, what I need to do is follow along with the steps here. It's actually going to be just these two steps that are highlighted from push an existing Git repository. Uh, since we don't have an existing folder or a new repository or whatever, uh, we just need to do these steps. Now, if you have not already set up Git on your computer, then of course you need to install and download Git. I imagine most of you already have that. And then you need to run these two commands uh, to set up the global configuration for your name as well as your email. Again, I've already done that. That's why I'm not running these commands. Uh, but the next command we're going to run here will be this one. So I'm going to copy this, copy this from your page from your GitLab server because it will be different and paste that in your terminal. And now we should have set up a remote called origin, which we can push our code to. So now I'm going to copy the next command, which is git push uh, hyphen u origin hyphen hyphen all. And now this will push all of the branches that we have to our GitLab server. And we shouldn't need to put in a username or password or anything because we set up our SSH key. So now if I refresh this page, we should see that our code is here. We have public source, et cetera. Uh, and now we'll be able to actually use this code from our server that will be running our React application. So that's actually it uh, in terms of pushing the code up and setting up GitLab. It's pretty straightforward to do this. The next thing we're going to do is deal with our uh, React app server. So I'm going to open my React app demo here. Uh, I'm actually not going to open it. I'm going to copy the IP address. And I'm going to open up a terminal or command prompt and I'm going to SSH into it. So to do this, you're just going to type SSH. You're going to type root at and then paste the IP address of your server. Type in yes and then enter the password. And now we are signed in. OK, so now that I'm signed in, the first thing I'm going to do is disable the root access on this server. It's just good practice to do this. You usually want to make a limited user like we had for the GitLab server. So to do that, I'm going to say add user Tim. Uh, for the new password, let's type that in right now and make sure we remember that because we're going to need that to sign in. And then I'm just going to skip through all of this because I don't actually need to enter that. Next, what I'm going to do is add this user to the sudo group. So I'm going to say add user Tim sudo. And now Tim should be in sudo. If we want to verify this, we can log out and then we can SSH Tim at and our server IP. Enter our new password here. And now did we get an error? Um, something happened here. It kind of. Oh, my apologies, sir. We are signed in. I don't know why I was uh, getting confused there. Maybe it was because it was at the bottom of the screen. Anyways, you can see that now we have signed in. Let me just clear the screen quickly and I'll just verify sudo is working by typing sudo. It is and we are good to go. 
So now that we have this user, we need to disable the root user. And to do that, we just need to remove the password. So we're going to type sudo pass WD hyphen D standing for delete and then root. Uh, we need to type in our password because it's the first time we've used the sudo command. And now we have deleted the root password. Now, this will make it so you can't log in, but just as an extra measure, I'm also going to lock the password uh, with hyphen L. And now if we want to verify if this is working, we can log out and we can try to SSH as root. And you'll see that when you type in the same password you had before, it will no longer let you sign it. And we can see here we just get permission denied. And what I can do now is exit out of this and SSH back in as Tim. This will be the user we use from now on. All right, so that step is done. Now we need to do a few installations here uh, for the stuff we're going to use on this server. So we actually are going to start by just cleaning our cache here. Uh, so we're going to say apd clean all and let's do sudo apd clean all. And there we go. OK, so we've cleaned everything. Next, we're going to do sudo apt update. This will take a second. Once it's done, I'll be right back. All right, so that is done. I've just cleared the screen to get that off. Uh, now that we've done that, we're going to install a few things that we need. So the first thing we need is Nginx. So I'm going to say uh, sudo apt install Nginx. OK, uh, yes, we do want to install this. And the next thing we'll install after this will actually be NPM and Node.js. Now, this is a bit of a complicated command, so I'm going to paste it in and I'll give you a second to copy this out. But we want to type not URL, but this is going to be curl and then hyphen S capital L and then HTTPS colon slash slash deb dot uh, no D or node source, sorry, dot com slash setup underscore 16 dot X. Uh, and then we're going to have the pipe here and then pseudo bash and then a hyphen. Now, what this is going to do is essentially grab the package from the node source so that we can install the most recent version of Node.js. Uh, if you just try to install it using APT, you'll get a really old version of Node, which is a few errors I was having before this video. And anyways, we need this command. So just pause the video if you need to write it out and hit enter and give it a second here to run. OK, so that is finished. Now that we have done that, we're just going to do an update. So sudo apt update like that. OK, now that we have updated, we are going to install Node.js. So I'm going to say sudo apt and then hyphen y install and then Node.js. And since we had ran that curl command previously, we should be getting Node.js 16 plus, which we are. So 16.5. Again, if you didn't run that, you'd be getting a version of like Node uh, 10 or Node 12, uh, which causes a lot of issues. So now that we've installed that, we should also have NPM installed automatically and we can test that with NPM. And if we want to check our node version, I think we can do node uh, hyphen V here and see we're on 16.15. OK, so now that we've done that, we're going to install Git. So we're going to type sudo apt install Git uh, again. We will go yes and install that. And then what we can do is clone our repository place it in the correct place and we'll pretty much be ready to go here uh, in terms of having our react application hosted. So what I need to do now is clone my repository from GitLab. So again, I was telling you that GitLab is going to host our remote Git repository. So we need to grab the code from here. Now to do this, we need to set up an SSH key on our server so that we can actually clone the repository. So I'm just going to type SSH keys here in GitLab to get to this page. Uh, and I'll leave that open. And then from here on our server now, not our local machine, our server, we're going to create a new SSH key. So I'm going to type SSH key gen. It's going to be the exact same command as before. ED25519. Uh, OK. Uh, yes, we'll save it there. Uh, we don't need a passphrase. And now, as I was saying before, we can use the cat command. So slash home slash Tim slash dot SSH slash ID. And then we want the dot pub. And then we can just copy these contents here. So let's copy that, go here and paste this in and add the key. OK, so now we're going to go back to the main page, go back to our project. We are going to go to clone and we're going to grab our SSH URL. Uh, make sure you grab the SSH, not the HTTPS. You want SSH because we just added the SSH key. Now that we have that, we can from our user's home folder type git clone uh, and then we can clone this URL. OK, so let's hit enter. Uh, I'll type yes, that's fine. And now if I type ls, you'll see that we have react app. And if I see the into react app, you can see I have my package JSON, package log, public and all of this stuff.
So from here, I need to install my NPM packages. So I'm going to type NPM I to install everything. And once that's done, we are going to build our NPM. Uh, so we actually or build our NPM project. So we have a optimized kind of bundle that we can then serve. We're then going to move this into a different location, which will be served by Nginx and then our React app will be hosted. All right, so that command worked. It looked like everything is good. Now that we have done that, we need to build our uh, NPM project. So I'm going to type NPM run build, and this should create a slash build folder, or I guess just a build folder. Uh, although it says we're getting an error here, it says cannot resolve React icon slash AI. So to fix this, let's just make sure we install React icons. I did think I installed it before, but I may not have installed it in the NPM project. Uh, I may have just installed it locally. So let's do NPMI React icons uh, and then we'll try this again. OK, it looks like that was added, so it probably wasn't there before. So now if I go NPM run build, hopefully this will not error out. Uh, and if it does build, then we'll be in the home stretch here and just one or two more commands left to go until we are finished. All right, so it looked like that was built successfully. Now let's have a look here and notice we now have a build folder. So what I now need to do is move this build folder to a specific location. So we're going to type CP standing for copy hyphen R for recursive. We're then going to type dot slash build and then slash and then an asterisk. So we're going to grab all of the files inside of the build directory and we're going to move that to slash var slash www slash HTML, which is the default location for uh, our Nginx website. So I'm going to hit enter there uh, and it says permission denied. So let's just make sure we add a pseudo before here. And now everything should be moved into that folder and we actually are having our React app hosted now. I know that wasn't the best English, uh, but what I can do is go to my Linode dashboard here, copy my IP address of my server and just paste it in here. And we should see that we have our website at this uh, URL or this domain. Now, I'm not going to show you in this video how to set up SSL or how to have a custom domain that is a little bit more complicated and kind of beyond the scope of what I wanted to show you. But I just showed you how we hosted the React application, how we did everything through GitLab uh, and hopefully gave you a really good starting point here to be deploying websites, creating, you know, React apps, hosting them using GitLab and version control and all of that type of stuff. So there you go. That's as easy as it is, although there is a lot of commands that you need to run through here. We have now hosted this website. All right. So with that said, I think I will start wrapping up the video here. As many of you know, my name is Tim. I run the Tech with Tim YouTube channel and I've teamed up with a node for this video series and hopefully many more in the future to teach you guys how to do stuff like this. Linode is an awesome company and they provide great services. I've been using them for many, many years. Uh, and as you saw in my Linode dashboard, I have a few Linodes that I'm running myself and that I've been using for, again, many, many years. So that's it for part two and for the entire series where I show you how to build a resume slash portfolio website. I hope you enjoyed this series and that it gave you a great project to add to your resume. Don't forget to make your own touches, change things up and really experiment with some of the things that I showed you in this video to further your learning. With that said, if you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and again, don't forget to claim that $100 60-day credit when you sign up for a new Linode account. Thank you again for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this series.